Hello guys and welcome back to Sweet and Sour Soccer with me James and Scott. I haven't said that for a while, I haven't introduced us with our names for a long time. Maybe just I just expect people to know who we are now. I mean, Do you know what I mean? Below us. What? Oh, yeah, we, <laughs> it is, it is. But we are, we are massive now in uh, in Liverpool, obviously with this huge Everton fan, fan base we've got. And we can't walk down the streets in Wolverhampton, well, you can't, uh, without getting recognised. So, you know, it's a hard life, it really is. Um, I think probably about two people, and that would probably be our parents, which would recognise us. Yeah, true. But li- nah, more than that. No, a lot more than that. A lot more than that. I, well, I can't move out here uh, for all the fans, so um, maybe they just don't recognise you. Guys, this is Transfer Talk, and we're trying to do it in a way where we cover both uh, club football and, of course, um, the Euros, which oh, England are in the semi-finals. Um, but I do like doing Transfer Talk. I miss uh, I miss doing club football because international football does get boring after a while. But, guys, we've got a lot of stories today. Um, movement from a lot of movement in and out of Barcelona, which does include our club, Wolverhampton Wanderers. We're going to start, though, and it's going to sound odd, but we're just going to start in Scotland. Um, Ludstrom from Sheffield United has moved to Rangers on a free transfer. I thought a club might have taken him in the Prem, wouldn't you say, Scott? Yeah, I definitely reckon there was probably clubs in the Prem after him, but I think Rangers is a very good move, especially what Steven Gerrard is building there. You fancy him to pick up the title again, maybe even have another decent run in Europe. Of course, they'll have opportunity to get into the Champions League, won't they, this year? So, Yeah, true. You know, I mean, quite an attractive proposition, I think, for him. That is true. He probably won't get a Champions League chance in England, I'd say. Well, definitely not as a starter. Um, Let's move on to a team that is in the Champions League next season who do not need to uh, qualify, a team that looked like they wouldn't uh, get in the top four at all, and that's Liverpool. And it looks like they mean a bit of business this year, uh, moving on players um, that I thought they would try to keep and attracting some big, big names. Um, One of them is Saul Niguez from Atletico Madrid, apparently has been offered to Liverpool. Another one is Renato Sanchez, um, a player that's played in England before at Swansea, who's now doing really well at the Euros, made an impression. There's been a few cryptic tweets online, hasn't there, with other clubs, but you know, Liverpool are preparing a bid. Yeah, definitely. And I think, as you say, that's going to be a massive, uh, massive, massive redesign to their midfield, won't it? You know, uh, obviously, Renato Sanchez fouled at Swansea some years ago. But, you know, I think I think you've got to be real in the sense that that was a long time ago. And since yeah. then, it looks so good elsewhere. Really exciting signing. As you say, he's been linked to elsewhere, been linked to United, also been yeah. linked to uh, our club Wolves, mainly just because he's Portuguese and people have put two and two together and got seven. <laughs> yeah, that's that. You, yeah, you're spot on there. Spot on. Um, let's move over to Arsenal, which is another club that, um, when I mentioned that there's been a few cryptic tweets, um, uh, Sanchez, Renato Sanchez um, was kind of, plan- I think, maybe having a little bit of fun with Arsenal fans on Twitter as to a move. Uh, what we do know is that they've made a third bid for Ben White. So, you know, um, Brighton want, I think, 50 million, thereabouts, maybe they might take 45. And they're putting their foot down Brighton. I think a lot of that will be down to Graham Potter. He does seem like a man that will stand up for what he wants and he won't let the board sell him on the cheap. (sighs) Would you pay that much money, even if you are Arsenal? It's an interesting one, isn't it, with Ben White? Because this is the second summer transfer window in a row where we've seen this happen. Of course, Leeds Mm. wanted him last year. Uh, Leeds yeah. just kept up in their bid continuously and they held out, they kept holding out and go, no, we're not selling him. And we're seeing the same again. Apparently they're willing to sell him, but only if the price is met. Um, it's if, a lot of money. If Brighton can get 45, 50 million, you think, you know, if they spend that smartly, they can get, what, four players maybe out of that? Three, four decent players yeah. that, you know... We'll go into yep. part of the squad, improve the squad, and you know potentially again keep them in the Premier League for another season. 
Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I would I would like to have Ben White at, at Wolves, but I don't think I'd be paying more than forty million, maybe even. 35 million you could argue is quite a lot especially when you're seeing other names floating around in the in the German league and the French league um, for almost half of that which are more accomplished you'd say um, at a Euro- European level and international level um, let's move on to La Liga where Gareth Bale has said uh, that he planned on staying at Madrid I don't think many people care. I think we've seen the best of Bale. Doesn't really care about football anymore. Use Spurs as a a fitness centre to get fit for the Euros. So no real big loss with Bale. Um, Coutinho as well uh, in La Liga at Barcelona. I mean, what a two or three, four years it's been for Coutinho. Massive move, 138 million points. I think Euros was it from Liverpool to Barcelona. Yeah, was loaned out to Bayern Munich. Won the Champions League with them. Although as a, even then, as a squad player for Munich, Barcelona had to pay Liverpool money for his Champions League win because if he won it uh, with Barca, they had to pay him. But they didn't stipulate if he won it with a different club that they had to pay him anyway. Um, he's come back to Barcelona. It hasn't really been worked out, and now apparently. You can get him for as little as twenty one million pounds. We've seen Arsenal linked, Leicester, but it seems like AC Milan are to land him. That's the early reports. Um it's a shame with Coutinho, isn't it? Because he could have been a Ballon d'Or contender, really, at Liverpool. Yeah, I think he was loved by Liverpool fans when only back in the day, and you know, obviously he took that for what was him for him anyway, was that dream move to Barcelona. Um yeah. Liverpool fans didn't really like how he kind of forced himself out as well at that yeah. period in time where it was a yeah. period in time where, you know, they really felt they were building something. And of course, they were, when you look at what they've done, they did build something in that time period after Coutinho left. Yeah, it's an interesting one with Coutinho. AC Milan, I'm a bit gutted about that. I have minded seeing him back in the Prem. I think he's a very talented, gifted player. Um, you know, obviously he's aged a bit now, so maybe that's why... Yeah. Perhaps going to that Italian league, but yeah, definitely a bit good. We're not going to see him back in the Prem. Seeing Coutinho at his best is incredible. Uh, that last six months a year for Liverpool, he was scoring free kick after free kick, goals from 25, 30 yards. Yeah. The one that pops in my head is the one against Southampton where it comes off the uh, bar and goes in. And what a player he was. He picked passes like De Bruyne. He was such a good player. But you kind of think, it's, listen, you never say never. Footballers play into their prime until they're 34, 35 now. So he could make a comeback. Um, and, you know, he might get that chance in Italy. Um, back to the Premier League. And speaking of Southampton, uh, Danny Ings has apparently rejected a four-year deal at, uh, at Southampton now for one uh, a player of his age combining that with his injury record a four year guaranteed contract which would make him I believe their highest or best ever paid uh, ever paid player that's, that takes something doesn't it it really just seemed like you said no I've done enough now I, I need that move to a, a, a bigger club uh, challenging for Europe or in yeah, and it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I think there's going to be quite. A f- it's going to be one of those that's going to materialise over the summer. Arsenal potentially after a new striker, uh, they're looking at moving on Lacazette. Potentially, yeah. you could see that happening. And look, if Spurs, Spurs have come out and said they want to keep Harry Kane, but if Harry yeah. Kane's like, I don't want to stay, and City table, uh, you know, a really attractive offer. Apparently, especially now with Grealish, who was of course another major City target. Apparently, at the moment, he's, you know, there's rumours going that he's going to be happy to stay at Villa, which means maybe the well, City will pursue Kane more in getting that replacement striker. You could see Ings going going somewhere in North London, let's put it that way. You know, he, he could yeah. be that Kane replacement. Um, of course, not replacing him, but he's not a bad choice, is he? And, you know, you think he probably no. would take, take, uh, take the opportunity of Spurs, as you say. 
I think if Danny Ings stays fit and can play 33, 34 games a season, I think he can score 20 Premier League goals. He's such a clinical finisher. He does take his chances. So it'd be interesting to see, but it's, a, it's an interesting one with Danny Ings. Fair play if he's, if he's really that ambitious and he thinks, do you know what? Maybe I could solidify myself as that second choice striker to Kane now that um, Jamie Vard is retired. Calvert-Lewin hasn't really made a mark yet. So, you know, if he gets that move to Spurs or an Arsenal, maybe he can get in the England squad. Fair play to him for not just settling for the money uh, at Southampton. Um, You mentioned Villa there. We obviously Grealish. um, There is talks in the woodwork that, uh, you know, um, he does want to stay at Villa, which, again, fair play if he wants to stay there, boyhood club and all that. Um, Villa are backing for Emil Smith-Rowe at Arsenal, who I am a big admirer of. um, And apparently they're making a third bid of over thirty-two and a half million pounds, which I think he's still what nineteen twenty. So I don't Villa this this summer transfer window. Forget them pushing eighth, seventh. They they could be pushing a lot higher than that. Yeah, they're continuing to show intent. Obviously, you know they've got the I guess the luxury of not having European football beforehand. And why that's actually a luxury is me. It means that you're not under as much uh, stringent FFP rules so they can keep on spending their money. And fair play to him. Uh, do I see Smith Rowe moving? I don't. I think Arsenal are going to make um, him a very pivotal part of their team this year. Obviously, we saw him have his break for a year last year. I don't see this transfer going through unless Arsenal really need the money to um, spend elsewhere. Apparently, Gwen Doos is already on his way out to Marseille. Yes. Rumours of Xhaka going as well. Um, you know, and apparently even Saliba could be off to Marseille. Of course, that uh, might just be a Odd loan one. move. But yeah. again, that, the, all three of those are going to raise funds. There's going to be more wages off the book. I don't see them selling like the young youth prospect in Smith Row myself. Especially now that they've had to officially say goodbye to Odegaard, who I think put out a post yesterday or today uh, on social media saying, thank you for my time. I love playing in England. It was something that I've always dreamt of doing and he hopes to come back one day. Um, now that they aren't able to sign Odegaard, which I think is one that they would like to have um, you know, put pen to paper on, I, I don't see them losing Smith Rowe. I think he's a real, real talent uh, moving on to Manchester United, who are progressing in their talks with Kamavinga. Um, he's only 18 years of age, doing very well for Rennes uh, or Rennes in um, in France, uh, along with um, Varane, who, of course, um, leaving Real Madrid along with well, not guaranteed, but obviously Ramos has come out and said, of course, he's um, he's no longer going to play um, for the Spanish Giants. There's talks in PSG or Man U. There's also Varane. I would rather, as a personal standpoint, see Ramos there, but I think I see them getting Varane over Ramos. I think Ramos to PSG is uh, a match made in heaven, big payday, and it's another star name to get season tickets in for uh, you know the French side. Yeah, that PSG are doing business this year. I mean, obviously, you know, they're doing a few free transfers, big names. Mm -hmm. Obviously not for the long term. Some of them obviously ageing a bit. They're setting themselves up well for the next two, three years. Apparently Mbappe uh, is going to see out his contract, so it's kind of like a counter thing there, isn't it? But, you know, they're having a really good summer, but maybe the summer after won't be as good, especially if they lose Mbappe on a free. Uh, But, yeah, I completely agree that, you know, uh, Varane, Varane to United. Do right. right. Which one was right? It, uh, I, you said about four different names. Um, I know. In regards to anyway, Varane, so. good signing. It'd be a good signing. Um, Camavinga as well. Uh, potentially be like a Fred replacement, wouldn't he? You'd think of a McTominay. Uh, yeah. Again, promising signing. It originally was uh, linked to Arsenal actually at the start of the transfer window. So, you know. Uh, yes. It'll be interesting to see him in the Premier League. I completely, I completely. Have I lost you? No, no, still. Oh, okay. I thought I'd lost you there. Um, yeah, I, I, especially we, we'll come on to the next transfer story, which kind of ties in with that Camavinga um, uh, signing potentially for United, because uh, Spurs are apparently beating United to the signing of Pjanic. Pjanic, uh, Pjanic who moved to Barcelona. Uh, last year, 2020, 
you know, spent four years uh, at Juventus, did very well for them, got to them to the Champions League final, did well at Rome, um, his club before moving to Juventus. He's now, he's still only 30 years of age. This guy has been, uh, you know, touted to be one of the best since his youth days. Um, if Manchester United have conceded the fact that they might not get Pjanic, where you get these rumours of Camavinga, where does Van der Beek come into it as well? They've still got Fred, they've still got Bruno, they've still got McTominay, they've still got Fred. I think if you're going to let one go off the radar, you let Pjanic go. I think it'd be a decent signing for Spurs. Yeah, I think it's a decent signing. And Spurs, interestingly, Spurs apparently uh, they're diving into uh, trying to get funds raised and they're willing to let as many as seven players go. Uh, those, yes. A few of those include Aurier, uh, Harry Winks, um, of course not Harry Kane. He's definitely not being allowed to go for them. But yeah, they're basically sat, trying to raise a lot of money, getting rid of what led classes a bit of dead wood to um, obviously yeah. drive up enough talent to uh, convince Kane to stay. You know, obviously got a new manager as well. And yeah, I think it'd be a very good signing, to be honest. I really do for Spurs. Um and let, let's, well. let's finish off with obviously the one big signing for us as a club Wolves. Trinkow, yeah. we've signed him on loan with an option to buy. Um, great business as well. We always manage to pull off these loans as an option to buy if you're a neutral watching, which is really impressive, especially when we've got issues at the moment with FFP. Um, this After this year, we should be a bit better because under the UEFA FFP rules, um, things will look a lot better there. So this is a really good sign. And I think the option to buy was 25 million euros. Yes. Uh, the bloke's been tipped, for, tipped to be a future Ballon d'Or player. Uh, um, player. Winner. Yeah. Still only yeah. 20, uh, still, not still only. He's only 21. Very exciting signing, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those where I don't know what it is with Wolves, but um, there was slight murmurs about this, but no one really took it serious about three days ago and it kind of died down, nothing happened. And then just bang, boom, on the Wolves' uh, official uh, social media, Wolves announced a loan signing of Trincao and you think, what, what's happened there? This is a guy who scored on his debut for Barcelona, has linked up very well with uh, Messi. I think he's made 24 appearance uh, appearances for Barcelona. Now, I can sit here and say, you know, I, I, I've done the YouTube videos that everybody does. You know, you check his highlights, but they're always the good things. But anything you hear about this guy, I, I mean, I'm not a big overseas watcher. Uh, I don't watch much German or Italian football as people like to pretend they do nowadays. But this is a kid that I have heard of and I know he's um, highly touted. So, I mean, we need extra players in our squad. So, uh, any war fans out there, you've, I mean, obviously the season ticket prices came out today as well. So, it's very good timing. But it's got to be exciting. Definitely. And it's definitely exciting. Uh, you know, obviously... It looks like Barcelona, are, uh, they're trying to find finances. We know how much they're in debt. They're also willing to let uh, another young left back in a fair power, I think it's pronounced. He's on uh, 15 million off to Leeds, apparently. Another one which Barcelona fans aren't happy about. You wonder if they're just trying to get rid of as many players as they can so they can just offer Messi another ridiculous contract after uh, he wanted to leave just a year ago. Of course, he's a free agent at the moment, but... Yes. Seems to be getting linked nowhere else but to Barcelona, which kind of says it all. But yeah, interesting one. Um, as a Wolves fan, I'm absolutely buzzing for the signing of Trincao. And yeah, let, let's see what happens with that one. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think that's all it for me, unless anything has broken in the last 10 minutes. I don't think it has. Nah, let's leave it there. Guys, please hit that like button. Please subscribe to the channel and we will see you on the next one. Take care.